Thank you for coming today. Please have a seat and get prepared for today's worship. We don't have many people here today because it's a long weekend, but we believe wherever we worship God, God will be with us. So uh, let's first dedicate our songs and singing to him with the praise. Uh, please stand and we will sing Shout to the Lord. Please raise up. Jesus, my Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you. All of my days, I want to praise the wonder of your mighty In Psalm 52, 23, the one who offers thanksgiving as his sacrifice glorifies the God, uh, glorifies the Lord. Uh, today is Thanksgiving. Mm, wow, tomorrow is Thanksgiving. However, it's not only Thanksgiving that we offer our thanks to God, but also every day. Uh, let's bow down and pray. Dear Lord, thank you so much for giving us Jesus, your son, a sacrifice so that we can 
get reconciled with you. Today we are standing here in front of you and offer our thanksgiving. We know that you care for us and you love us and you are righteous and holy. That's why you uh, want Jesus to be uh, in the middle to help us get uh with you uh, so that we can be your sons and daughters. We thank you for that. Lord, please uh, accept our sacrifice our of thanksgiving as we sing to you. Uh, let's sing. Give thanks. Let's sing it with a prayerful heart. Thanks. thank God for what he has given us and also we would like to um, come to him come back to him with all our minds, all our heart and all our souls uh, let's sing the song at the cross so that we can come back to him and get ready for today's message
Good morning, everyone. Hope everybody's having a great holiday this weekend. Um, enjoying your family dinners or friends, uh, like meals with friends. So, um, yeah, if not, you still have time. Today and tomorrow, just enjoy your time with friends and then just um, gather together, right? And um, um, I think also we, have, we should do it more often or even daily, we should always, I would inc really encourage you to count on the blessing from God and every little thing that's happening in your life to know his goodness and um, to build a deeper relationship with him or even to seek him, to look for ways that you can see God that's uh, working in your life. That would be amazing, right? So we're just trying to be um, more aware of what's going on, right? So before we start, we'll, we'll, we'll pray together. Okay, let's pray. Um, Father God, thank you for um, this day. Um, thank you that we can gather here together um, with a really nice weather, nice fall that's never been before. And Lord, just let us look up to you and let us just feel your presence, feel your creation and how beautiful you are, Lord. And even so today, Lord, I just want to pray that... Um, yeah, you bless us, and um, Lord, you know our problem, and you know our heart. Maybe we come here, each one of us come here with a broken heart, and then we'll look at a broken story, um, but that's a human story, and Lord, because of you, everything is made in whole. Everything is um, 
in your will and your plan, Lord. And then we want to see your goodness and see your blessing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so this time we're going to pick up the story of Joseph again. So this is a, this is a series. If you've been here quite, uh, sometimes, you will know this is the third time we're talking about Joseph's story. So um, it's been three months since last time I talked about Joseph. So we'll do a recall on Joseph's story and background, okay? So Joseph was the beloved son of his father Jacob, uh, later called Israel. Right, and his father is pretty wealthy. Pretty, yeah, has a lot, a lot of kids, twelve kids in total. Right, because but because his father's love for Joseph alone, kind of, and also because Joseph received a prophetic dream from God, that prophesizing that all his brothers and father and mother will one day bow down to him. So this has caused a lot of hatred between. Joseph's brother because you know nobody want to say like oh one day I'll bow down to him I'm happy about that right so because of that so one time is right these brothers decided to kill kill Joseph but ended up but they did not ended up um, selling him for money so Joseph was sold to Ishmaelites merchant and which was brought him somewhere else yeah, just like any slave and when they're kind of in exile, right? Um, and he, his brothers went home. See, he, he was the beloved son. And then his brother went home and told his, their father, saying, oh, you know, Joseph somehow got killed in the wild, and, um, you know, that's too bad, right? So in this, this is kind of the background. So he's kind of changed his identity from being a son of a wealthy family to a merchant, merchandise, we will say, because he's already in other people's hand and he cannot decide what to do. Uh, yeah, so in that case, he has no rights whatsoever when there, he's belonged to the merchandise, the merchant. So Joseph was actually sold, he got sold in Dothan. Do Dothan is actually in Israel. And by the time, um, uh, he belong. He was in Israel, and then they would. He belongs to the uh, the merchant. So basically, got he got sold. But he doesn't know what's happening next day after he's sold. He's like, okay, I'm trapped here. I don't know where I'm going. I don't know how far I'm going. I'm leaving with these people to somewhere else. I don't know. And then he, at that time, I would say. All he knows is that he is no longer his daddy's beloved son. Well, he might, he might be, but he can't depend on him anymore. And no one will be, going, will, going, will be going to listen to him and compromise him anymore as he was like back home. So is, this is like a, a, tr a dramatic change for anybody from like identity change, right? So the Ishmaelites actually took Joseph to Egypt. Later we learned that, and it was, it's about 500 kilometers away. However, at that time, Joseph didn't know where he's heading and what kind of future that he can still dream of. Yeah. Um, so for example, when we're talking about he's a merchant, uh, merchandise, so how does that look like? For example, with my iPad, I said, this is my, this is belongs to me, and I need to sit here and do nothing else. It shouldn't do anything else. But as Joseph, Joseph has a spirit and soul. But even though, as a human, he's not supposed to have his own mind, own uh, desires. Okay, so now, we go into Genesis 39, and verse 1, it starts, Now Joseph have, had, had been taken down to Egypt. Potiphar, an Egyptian who was one of Pharaoh's officials, the captain of the guard, bought him from the Ishmaelites who had taken him there. So let's figure out the plot first. Okay? So we learn that Joseph is now in Egypt. Right? We talked about that earlier. He never been here, and he's sold again from Ishmaelites to this man called Potiphar, who is an Egyptian, and who is actually a pharaoh's um, official. So his identi identity changed again. So he's no longer a merchandise, 
but somehow he's a slave now. He's kind of like in contract, but sold for life, right? We, won't, we shouldn't say like any identity is better than the other, but it's just saying that he's going from one disaster to another, right? So I don't know how he would feel. Like uh, for me, I probably would cry every single day, right? So to complain or even to just um, trying to figure out life within that situation, right? So it, I don't know if this plot reminds you anything, but it, this actually reminds me a lot of online novels I have read, you know, how like a princess become a maid and how we wealthy men become a servant or, and then so that story, kind, all those stories kind of unfold through how they survive and succeed through what they did, right? So what about Joseph? Okay, so today we'll give you a little bit history lesson, <laughs> another part of lesson. So there's some fact about ancient Egyptian slaves. Slaves. So basically they're slaves, of, of course, they're at the bottom of social pyramid. They're not respected, they're not educated, they did not have any free time, and they work all day until night, or even some of them work at night as well. So they're, um, they're expected to obey their master, of course, and actually in the past, 80% of ancient uh, Egyptian population was made up of slaves. Yeah, so before, so, uh, before people become slaves, they usually either are prisoners or they're prisoners of war or criminals from other cultures around that area. So they would they were work in the household, some, were, some of them work in the field, they could be uh, working with the stable, work with, in quarries and mines and to build pyramids. So that's what slaves are doing. So when Joseph was bought by Potiphar and he's working in his Potiphar's household, right? So what would he be doing there first? entering his house. If we can relate to the stories or novels that we have read in the past, we know oh, they might be like scrubbing toilets, serving food, making food, or cleaning, washing dishes, walking clothes, laundries, right? Anything in the, in the home, and then which other, other slave might not want to do, right? They start somewhere dirty. Yeah, so, um, so he could be doing one of his, the, these tasks. But however, remember, he used to be his father's beloved son. So basically, he's from a wealthy family who possibly have other people, other servants who serve him, who cook his food and um, wash his clothes, serve him. But now he had to do that, what his servant used to do, and to make a living or even to survive. So then we continue reading verse 2. It says, the Lord was with Joseph so that he prospered and he lived in the house of his Egyptian master. Okay, so he prospered. So it, it's why he prospered, because the Lord was with him. That means he's actually means that he's doing well in his Egyptian master's house. So is it saying that he was able to do whatever chore that was given to him, even cleaning toilets? Well, then he needs to be willing, right? We have to start somewhere and learn, he actually probably learned everything from zero as well. So how did he prosper? Like we all want to prosper in life. We all want to do well in different part of our life. Doesn't matter our study, our work, our daily life, our relationship with others. We want, we want to see that good side of our, uh, what life can really turn into. Um, but for Joseph, Maybe he was not able to perform these tasks because he had to learn from zero. And because of God, do you think that God was magically helping him in everything? He was not doing anything, but God was helping him at night when he's sleeping? Or is it like that fairy tale that God comes in? So then, what is the Lord was with him? So let's take a step back. Back to the journal uh, journey, he traveled from Dothan in um, Israel to Egypt, which is not written, yeah. But just like a lot of countless night, our feelings, a lot of our feelings are not shared with others, and maybe it, will, it never will. But day and night, Joseph traveled from Dothan to Egypt. 
he has a lot of plenty of time to be in solitude or to I would say maybe he was in solitude with God that's his only friend back at that time so my question to you is when do you think about God or when do you think when do you really kind of reflect your life think about think about God think about how he is like what he would do maybe think about if he is real or if he is almighty all-knowing is he reliable does he care does he love you would you reflect on yourself in the middle of the night when it's quiet um, when no one bother your your thoughts walking from Israel to Egypt, I would imagine Joseph staring at the star at night, super quiet, thinking about this God of his, thinking about what his brother did to him. He begged, but none of his brother listened, but sold him. Um, think about his father, hoping that his father can come and redeem him, and then so he can return back home and be his you know, son again. What else would he think about? Would he think about um, how God is like to him in the past? Recalling the dream that God has given him. Recalling the promise God has given his father Jacob. Or even recall the promise God has given to his great-grandfather Abraham. And to recall how God was with them in their troubles. And how God delivered them through their troubles. Actually, I want to tell you a story. So last month, I was able to t attend a friend's um, baby dedication uh, ceremony. So I was, um, so they did a baby dedication in front of their church members, and fa and also they invited family and friends. So they publicly announced how they will treat their baby girl in the future and the blessing they want to give her. So super, I was super touched because yeah, I know them for a long time. So along with the baby dedication, there were actually three baptism, and actually I would say three young ad adults under 20, so I was pretty profound. Um, yeah, so they were there to public announce and giving their testimony, saying that they will follow Jesus. So one of the high school students, a uh, high school boy, shared his testimony. He said he, he is actually the firstborn in his family, and his younger brother has ADHD. And his parents spent years caring for his young brothers and looking for ways to help him. So they have been kind of ignoring his need. Uh, sometimes, I shouldn't say all, all the time. But, you know, he is only a teenager. Until this day, he's probably only 16 or 17, just like Joseph. He's only a teenager. So he recalled his parents telling him that, you know, you are a big brother, you should behave, you know, you should care for your younger brother, but, you know, he's still a teenager. So because of that negligence from his parents, he was actually pretty hurt, right? So, and, but also because he, was, he grew up in a Christian family, so he um, has a relationship with God, he has lots of questions for God um, that he has to think and reflect whether he's loved or whether God really cared about him. Uh, in his testimony, he said, there's one sentence that he said, in times of suffering, God is with us the most. So it kind of got me thinking, right? So I can tell from his sharing that he, he had a lot of struggles, even as a teenager, uh, but he found peace in God. He has the courage to do the right thing and has the confidence that God is someone that he can depend on. So Joseph was about 17 when he got sold, and so in his time of suffering, would he notice that God is with him? God did not necessarily take him out of his adversity, but God was with him. Then the question for him becomes why? Why is he facing these circumstances? Why is his life Heading, um, having all these life events, where his life is going to end up with. It says in verse 2 again, the Lord was with him. Not that the Lord gave him answers. Not knowing the answers does not stop the Lord to be with him. 
and does not stop our relationship with our Lord. So in time of, of suffering, God is with us the most. So why? God is always here no matter our ups and downs, right? Um, then why is he with us the most when we are suffering, when we can notice that he's here? Um, maybe it is not a God issue. Maybe it's us. Yeah. If we read Joseph's story closely, we will see this is the first time uh, it says the Lord was with Joseph. Our hearts open up to him more to God. Our heart, heart becomes more sensitive to his presence. Um, yeah, because we need him. And the truth is, God is always with us. So rejoice in his presence and despite our, our up and down. And so we can, so let's depend on him and see how God is with us. Okay, so how about tell your neighbors now, God is with you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, then in verse 3, it says, when his master saw the Lord was with him and that the Lord gave him acts, uh, success in everything he did. In everything he did. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, I'm like, I want everything. <laughs> success in everything, but still have up and downs, right? So his, Joseph's ma master, Potiphar, saw the Lord was with, with him. How can he tell the Lord was with him? It's, it's quite interesting because um, back then, Egyptians, like, we probably all know Egyptian has a lot of different god, Egyptian god, and it could be the Ra or somebody else. Um, gods with different responsibilities. So Potiphar was able to identify Joseph's God was with him, and his God gave him success in everything he did. So pretty, it, it, he's a pretty useful God, right, to Potiphar, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, um, it's actually a fairly normal assumption that they worship a God or gods. The difference is just which God do you believe? And which God do you believe in? Or which, which God can, qu question to you is which God can others see in you? Maybe has anyone said they can see God in you? Or have you seen God in someone's life? What does that look like? Is it because this person has magical powers? They prosper everything? And just, wow, everything is them. So how do you see God in other people? Let's see Joseph's case. So even though jo Joseph does not understand why he is in his current situation in, as a slave, as a servant, his life still needs to carry on, right? Nothing would stop, even if we wanted to stop. And it didn't stop him from trusting the Lord. It did not stop him from believing God and doing, doing what is right. He didn't say, oh, I don't want to do these tasks, right? I'm, I'm not born to rub, uh, scrubbing the toilet. I was, that's not me. Um, he, he, he did not say, I'm not supposed to be a slave, a servant. So, mm. But in the contrast, he did well in everything. How do we know that Joseph is still following God? It's actually it's in later verses of this chapter, chapter. He said, how then could I do such wicked thing? and sin against God. So for somebody who is not with God, who they will not mention God at all or care about offending God, right? So he has God in mind. Actually, I wanna share, there's actually three things that are interrelated to each other um, in our lives. They are your faith, your worldview, and your way of life. Your faith can shape your worldview. Ultimately, it will shape your way of life like what you do every day. So sometimes, let's say, my worldview or some, some new worldview come in, I have to evaluate, and then it will challenge my faith. And my way of life reflects my faith. What I'm doing every day, it's back, backed up with my faith. Maybe I'm saying this is my faith, but my, my action doesn't align with it. So that, that means that my faith is already shifting. So it, it's interrelated um, to each other 
in our lives. And um, sometimes we do have to evaluate what we wanted to achieve. And yeah. So, so yeah, so with faith, so does Joseph. Through his way of life, through his daily work, his behaviors, his actions, Potiphar was able to identify Joseph's faith is in the Lord and his God, right? So what, what do we learn from Joseph at this time? Is that when we are puzzled or in doubt in life or even doubt for God, it doesn't mean we cannot trust him. Sometimes it just means we have to grab him much more to carry on and see how God bless us through that time. So the second part of this verse is that it says the Lord gave him success in everything he did. So yes, so everything he did, right? The key word is that he did. He did, so the Lord gave him success. So it's not about a magical power. It is still some work that's in our hand. So Joseph, he has chose to do everything his worldly master asked him to do. And God through that, blessed him, give him success in everything. So trusting the Lord is not really saying letting God do your work. Um, instead, it's about you doing yours. God will do his. Yeah, we don't do God's work, or God, we shouldn't let God do our work as well. But there are miracles as time happens. Yeah, so let's continue. In verse 4, it says, Joseph found favor in his eye, so Potiphar's eye, and become his attendant. So Joseph, uh, Potiphar put him in charge of his household, and he entrusted to his care everything he owned. So even though they have different God, right? So Potiphar and Joseph. Potiphar somehow trusts Joseph because of the good result of his work, which is the success that God has given him. So Joseph is still being a slave, but become, he became Potiphar's attendant, which might be a little better than performing other duty in the household. So a little bit closer to the master. Then Potiphar put him in charge of his household. So now he has more responsibility in, in the house or even more um, authority in the house because he takes charge of everything. Um, I would say Joseph at this point possibly had built characteristic of loyal and dignity so that he was chosen by Potiphar to be in charge of his household, which is he had provided quality work and the faith that had backed him up, which is God, the, the God who made him prosper. Actually, I would say personally, I, I think nobody likes working, maybe someone <laughs> so, but if it's possible, I would say there was one time in an interview, um, I got asked what kind of compensation I want. I'm like, um, compensation? Can I have, can I have a, can I take vacation 365 days a year and have a full pay, right? Like asking my me. So, yeah, so that's kind of like t our tendency. We like vacations, we like rest, right? Who likes working, really? Um, so in some sense, Metaphorically, we are slaves in our workplace, right? We work for our employers. Um, we still need to work for our earthly masters. Maybe we can change change our masters, but we still need to work. <laughs> yes, we need to work. <laughs> so um, the master-slave relationship should go as, you know, the slave provides service to the master, then the masters provide shelter to their slaves. So that's kind of like a mutual relationship, how it should be like. So actually in Ephesians 6, 5, it says, slaves, obey your earthly masters with respect and fear and with sincerity of heart, just as you would obey Christ. Okay. So not, on, uh, not only should we obey Christ, Christ, we should work uh, uh, diligently to our earthly masters. And because we obey Christ, we, would, we should obey Christ to obey our earthly masters, right? So it's not a bad idea to sometimes review the work in our hand to assess if we're faithful, uh, assess if we're trustworthy in the, in the work that was given to us. So of course, not all masters are great, but um, 
Jesus never um, afraid to stand up to authority to challenge them. So, but then we'll talk about that in a different time. Um, yeah, so Joseph could be depressed for whatever happened to him, but he continued uh, to be diligent with his work. He has let go of his old identity in life, knowing he's not a master anymore, not a you know, nice wealthy son anymore. He is now a slave or servant. There's nothing, so same with us, there's nothing actually we can't let go. Um, our social status, our pride, our job, or even sometimes our wealth, right? Jesus was the same. So for him to be a God, uh, he came down to our world, this messy world. Um, he, for him, he's a God, he's a teacher to his disciples, but he's still, he's still willing and actually did kneel down and wash his disciples' feet. Okay. So in verse 5, it says, From the time he put him in charge of his household and of all that he owned, the Lord blessed the household of Egyptians because of Joseph. The blessing of the Lord was on everything Potiphar did, had, both in the house and in the field. So again, Potiphar gave Joseph more responsibility, right? Not just charging in the house, also give him his field uh, and everything he actually, all he owned. So, and because of Joseph, the Lord blessed Potiphar for all that he owned. That's quite uh, stunning. Joseph was a slave to Potiphar, but the blessing of the Lord was also on Potiphar's belonging, household, and field. You know, when we are in an identity of a slave, we might look for shelter, we might look for support from, from the ones who has more power, who has more influence, who has more knowledge. However, can you imagine in this, uh, in this top-down relationship, the one who has less power can bless the one who has more? So if we translate this kind of relationship in, in our real life, it could be in a form of parent-child relationship, employer-employee relationship, maybe it's a teacher-student relationship, so, or more, if you can think of. So those who have less power can bless the one and authority, right? But where does that power come from? So if I say I don't, for example, I don't like the way my family's like, my blessing to them is to pray for them, pray for their well-being, and not letting myself to be influenced by their word, behaviors, and decisions. And that's what I can do for myself. And most importantly is that to have faith in God, to believe that because of me, he will bless them. One of my favorite verse I wanted to share with you in Genesis, actually also in Genesis, Genesis 12, 2, for Ab Abraham, the great-grandfather of Joseph. He received this blessing from God. God said to him, I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. Lord, the Lord blesses us not only for us, but in order to make us a blessing to others. So whatever we receive from God is giving us, also is a, giving us a privilege to bless others. So we should, whatever that God has blessed us, we should receive with joy and use, use them to glorify God, to bless others. So yeah, everybody is a blessing and can be a blessing to others. So even in a relationship where you, where you have less power and advantage, you are the weak one. You can still bless the other one. You can still bless your parents. You can bless your employer. You can surely bless your teacher, or even you can bless your significant other half. Right? Would it be great one day you can say in confidence that God blessed others because of you, because, because others um, bless others because of your story, your testimony, your way of life, or your faith. How great it is for us to be part of God's great work. So 
Okay, so tell your neighbors, tell them you can bless me. <laughs> yeah, so in um, verse 6, so Potiphar left everything he had in Joseph's care. Was Joseph in charge? He did not concern himself with anything except the food he ate. Now, um, Okay, so remember jo uh, Potiphar is the captain of the guard. So Potiphar left everything in Joseph's care. So he did not only give him his household, his field, his um, everything, but also part, I would say, a part of his job, like making sure that Joseph is taking care of everything, everything he only needs to eat and, yeah. <laughs> so there's an increase of work. So becoming, so Joseph has started from zero in his household, okay? So he had to start at zero, mastered everything, become Potiphar's attendant, in charge of his household, then in charge of everything Potiphar owns. Now everything that Potiphar had, including his jobs and responsibilities. So this had helped, actually helped Joseph to understand the structure of Egyptian families and their governance system, which has prepared him for the future. Though his work under Potiphar, um, jo Joseph did not complain for the work that was given to him. So instead, he did well in everything. So he prospered because God was with him. Because of Joseph, God has blessed Potiphar. So he has started somewhere small, but he had gained through his work. Luke 16.10, it says, whoever can be trusted with er very little can also be trusted with much. So Joseph actually built up the trust from Potiphar and did well in every little thing. So same with us at Roots. Sometimes we're serving in Roots, we sometimes start, start small. Actually, uh, everything, every little thing is important so that we can have our service running every Sunday. So I would encourage you to sign up with our morning setups. <laughs> During, uh, <laughs> yeah. So we will also have other duties, for example, in the churches to keep, keep us running. We have our finances, dealing with our offerings and expenses. And if anyone wanted to learn accounting <laughs> from for a little bit, they can come to talk to me if you are. <laughs> yeah, so I'll be happy to teach. And we'll also have our IT at the back, making sure our Sunday service runs smoothly and juggle around with our sun sound board. So you can talk to Shelly if you wanted to be part of that to start something small and to see how God um, teach you, how where God lead you. And if you got talent, you want to join worship team, of course. You can always talk to Johnny and um, to, so we can worship God together. Right? Or even though, even though you say you know nothing or you know very less, you can, you, know, you can still bless our church, bless roots. So to grow in roots, I would say it is um, the simply, simply get to know more about this God who is full of wisdom and love. So start small despite of your status as well. So um, for example, we have two girls helping with our PowerPoint. <laughs> we have Erin and Joyce. Joyce recently joined and she is actually on her way to master it. So, and also as for Erin, some of you might know she's a PhD. I always wow at whatever she does. <laughs> it's a mystery. <laughs> Um, but yeah, but still, she's still taking, she's still willing and taking the time to do our weekly PowerPoint and to do the very little thing. And you know, it's way beyond, it's way too easy for her PhD degree. <laughs> yeah, so whatever we do, we can use it to bless others. So just like Joseph, step by step, we will see how God's goodness to us. Okay, so let's tie back to our theme. We didn't ta really talk about theme. So our theme, our title is our choices versus God's will. So even when Joseph became a slave in his adversary, pretty sad, he still chose to believe in God. He has dealt, but still have God in mind. So he's doing the right, he was making a right decision. So that's, that was his decision and do what is 
what he sees right. So what do we see God's will for him? So God has prepared, prepared him for his future to gain the knowledge of Egypt, Egypt culture and the, their living. And we will see how God's plan for him was not stopped. His bl blessing, God's blessing didn't end and he was still working. Okay. So in verse 6, it ended by saying that the, the appearance of Joseph was well-built and handsome. So next time we'll dive into the trouble that his physical appearance brought to him <laughs> and how he was challenged. Okay, so let's pray. Um, Father, we give thanks to you. Thank you for being our Lord. Thank you for finding us. Thank you for being with us. And Lord, pray that we have a gentle heart to see you. Show us your way, show us your blessing, even show us how we can be a blessing to others. Pray that we have a thankful heart, a grateful heart, a heart that can rejoice your presence and be content in your providence and continue to trust you, Lord. So let's take a moment uh, just to thank God for everything he has done in our life. Maybe it's the great fall weather that he has created that we can enjoy for a little bit more than a week. Uh, maybe it's a great friend that he gave in your life or a miracle that he, ha he did in your life. Or maybe it's even simple as a healthy body that, ha that he has given you and your family. Or he answered your prayer. Or even just a rooftop to sleep at night. Thank you, Lord. May we come to you daily to praise you for who you are and thank you for what you've done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's respond to this wonderful message with a song, Oceans. Uh, please stand. It's true that we are not promised with all the wonderful, smooth um, success in our life, but God did promise that he will be with us. In this world, we will have trouble, but Jesus has already overcome the world. You call me out. You call me out upon the waters, the great unknown, where feet may fail. And there I find you in the mystery, in oceans deep, my faith will stand. call upon your name and keep my eyes above the waves when oceans rise my soul will rest in your embrace for I am yours and you in deepest waters your sovereign hand will be my guide where feet may fail and fears around me you've never failed and you won't start now so I will call upon your name and keep my eyes above the waves 
when oceans rise, my soul will rest in your embrace, for I am yours, and you Praise God, and we trust Him with our life in front of us. Spirit, Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever You would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander. My faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Spirit, lead me when my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander. Be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. I will call upon your name. Keep my eyes above the waves, and I, my soul, my soul will rest in your embrace. I am. You are mine. Thank you so much, Ruth. Please be seated. And Grace will have an announcement for us. Okay, so in some announcement, uh, so um, a first first one is that we have pizza in the kitchen. So it's basically down the hallway, around eleven thirty, and. Yeah, about that time. It's super yummy, and uh, stop by and enjoy with others, right? Sometimes we call, if we have a coffee, we call a coffee break. Let's call it a, a coffee chat. Let's call it a pizza chat. <laughs> yeah, so second, that we do have a sign-up sheet. is basically at the round table at the back today. So that's for our setup. So like I said earlier, our service cannot be done without people helping and uh, serving together. So if every little piece... Um, be part of it. So if you have time and if you wanted to join one day um, just to, let's say, help with the chairs or anything that's easy to do, you are um, more than welcome to sign up at the back and Michelle will reach out to you for the details. Okay, so yeah, let's be part of God's work. So lastly, um, trust in the Lord in all, every, uh, every aspect of our lives, our time and our money. Right? Jesus once said, for where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. It will be also. Your, where, there your heart will be also. So, yeah, so where are you building your treasure? Yeah, where you're storing them. So, um, yeah, I would, I would encourage you to give as what God has called you to do. And if, for those who are visiting and um, get give as you see fit yeah so you can e-transfer at donation at truthbaptist.org yeah so thank you everyone for coming today and that's the end of our service okay thank you <laughs>